Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design. I'm so glad you could join me here. I really am super excited about today's project because it is mixed media. And as you know, I've all been learning how to work with mixed media. And I was really excited when my design team kit from Little Birdie Crafts had so many wonderful mixed media supplies in it. So what I have made is this eight by eight canvas, mixed media canvas. Um, I love the beach. I love everything about the beach. The beach is my happy place. So I put together this canvas using all of those wonderful supplies. I created a rocky coastline using this um, wonderful mixed media paste. And to tint that brown, I added some Distress Oxide Vintage Photo ink. And then to add more texture, let me move this out of the way, I um, mixed in these glass gel beads. It's glass bead gel medium and it's really cool stuff. Um, so you can see it's got a, like a really rocky texture. It looks super good. And then for the background, I used a technique that I've been watching my good friend and fellow design team member on the Frilly and Funky Challenge, Jenny Marples. She has been using a brayer and gesso to create wonderful textured backgrounds. And I don't have it down like Jenny does, but I'm pretty pleased with the way this turned out. So the first thing I did was I sprayed this wonderful watercolor canvas. This is from a uh, little birdie. It's eight by eight and it's 100% cotton paper, which is so cool. So it really takes, like it'll handle water and paints and all the things you want to add to mixed media. So I laid down Color Splash in Lemon Zing and Ocean Mist and I kind of picked it up with paper towels and I sprayed it with water and then I put more down and I took some up and I got a really kind of a neat background. Then I brayered my white gesso over that and the color as I heat dried it began to seep up through the gesso which was very very cool. So then the next thing I did was I mixed gel medium in with this um, matte acrylic chalk paint and mica powder which mica powder is really cool you guys and then I brayered that over the top and it softened all those really vivid blues and gave it kind of that washed out beachy feel that I was going for. Then the next thing that I did, and this was exciting because I'd never done this before, well I laid down some stenciling, hold on I'm getting ahead of myself, I used this wonderful text stencil with frayed burlap distress ink and then I also stenciled, where did I put that? This is a really cool one. This is how I created the stones along the bottom. I just lay this along the bottom and put my mixture of mediums. And I have step out photos of this um, that I'll intersperse so you can kind of see how it came along. And then I used Mermaid Lagoon Distress Oxide ink with this stencil just to create kind of a modeled, um, the way water looks with sunlight on it. And, um, did all of that and I was really happy with how that turned out. So then this was the exciting part. I have been dying to try this two-step crackle medium and it comes in a base coat that is a, is a little thinner than like the consistency of white glue and you brush that down and you let it dry completely. And I did heat dry it so I think that might have affected my crackling but then I came back with the top coat when the base coat was completely dry and brushed that over it and again I'm impatient so I used my heat gun and I think like it's got really cool little crackles I think I would have gotten really big crackles if I had been patient enough to set this aside and let it dry overnight but I'm happy with the way it looks I, I love it so then I tore this vintage clock image from the Vintage Reflections paper pack. And it's all this wonderful craft taupe, very soft, very subtle. It's great for vintage. And I tore that and put that down with some collage medium. I added some more texture with this rolled burlap and I used the back side because I didn't want the pink polka dots. And then I added more texture with this craft twine that you get from Little Birdie. And then I built 
my flower cluster. And I used Wendy Arctic, Arctic Ice. I used Symphony Ivory because I love the sparkle. And then I tucked in these little rosebuds. They're just cream rosebuds. So these are the Wendy, these are the Symphony, and these are the rosebuds. Then I dug into my beach box where I had shells and stuff that I picked up off the beach and bought at shell shops. And I added these in to build this collage along with um, Spanish moss and then this little bit of lichen that I picked up at the park. And I tucked in shells and all of that. This is Little Birdie Chipboard. It comes from this set, um, which is Think Positive. And it's got all these different chips and I just cut the blessed out because I feel blessed when I'm at the beach. And I painted this with the um, walnut cream acrylic paint and then I rubbed mica powder over it and hit it with a little water and that's how I got that wonderful shimmer on there. So that's kind of cool. And then this is a Tim Holtz. This is from his Sand and Sea Bigs die. I die cut the seahorse from the vintage paper pack, embossed it um, using Mermaid Lagoon on the flat side of the embossing folder, and then I hit it with Versamark ink and ultra thick embossing powder to create my focal point. So that's the canvas. I super love it. I'm so happy. I'm, I'm still. Oh, the final thing. Yeah, yeah. The final thing, I shook in this wonderful hearty melange. It's a, it's like a glitter mix. It's got big pieces and small pieces, and it's this is the silver, and it's wonderfully vintage. So I went back in with hot glue wherever I wanted to add this, and then this is also just a little scrap of a little birdie chipboard. This is the chevron. I had that left over from another project. I save everything. So this was kind of the finishing touch, and then of course I just spattered it with walnut ink, which brought up the crackles, and then wiped it down. So that is my 8x8 eight eight mixed media canvas. I'm calling this Flowers of the Sea. And hang around, we'll go over the step out photos, and then there's a video portion where you'll see me build the collage live. So don't go away. Okay, so this is where I'm at with this canvas, and I've had the step out photos all along the way, kind of showing you how I created this background. And I've just been waiting for this two-step crackle medium to dry. I did the base coat, and I've never done this before, so it's gonna be exciting. Now I'm going to do the top coat. So it says just apply it and cracks will start appearing as it dries. So let's see what happens. This could be fun. So it's kind of um, uh, got the consistency of a clear adhesive and I'm just going to use my brush 
and I'm going to brush it on and see what happens. I'm not as worried about the center because that is where I'm going to have my um, flower cluster and such, my focal point. But I do want to get some crackle on these edges. All right. And I also want to get some down here on these rocks. I applied a light coat of the base on the rocks. So let me just come back in with this and see if I can get some crackle effect going on down here. All right, I'm just going to leave it alone and let it do its thing and we'll let it dry. I don't know if I should use a heat gun or if I should just let it air dry. So I'm going to air on the side of caution. Just let it air dry and I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I fess up. I did use my heat gun because I got impatient, but you can't really see it now. But maybe you can pick up a little bit of the crazing that's in the background. And the cool thing that happened was that using the heat gun made those mica powders that I mixed into my paints and different mediums they kind of came up to the surface. So everything has this wonderful, very subtle golden glow to it. And I really like what the crackle finish did to the rocks. So this is cool. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we want to bring up those cracks. So I'm going to take some um, walnut ink, spray it on my craft sheet, I'm going to dilute it with water because I just want it to be really thin, almost like a wash. And I'm just going to pick it up with my brush and I'm just going to very quickly brush over this background. And don't freak out. We're not, um, this is not going to do. We're just wanting to fill in those little tiny cracks to give this a great vintage look. So that should be pretty good. Now I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm just going to go in and buff this off. Oh wow, this is so beautiful. I'm really excited. This is the first time I've done this and I'm doing it with you guys right now. So holy cow, that's that's gorgeous. Can you see that? I'm tickled pink. That's awesome. And if we want to thin this out a little bit, I think I can just add a little more water and maybe go in and just dab. Yep. So when it's wet, I will tell you the medium gets kind of tacky. So be careful. Oh, wow. I'm going to say good enough. I, I love this. Let me clean up a little bit of this mess so I don't get ink everywhere and I'll be right back. Can you see that? That is really cool. I'm pretty happy right now. Okay, so we're just going to start building our collage. And I've torn a piece of paper from the Vintage Reflections 12 by 12 paper pack. This is a fabulous neutral paper you get six designs, two of each design, and it will go with anything, so that's really fun. So I tore this really faded clock image out of the paper, and then I inked it with a Little Mermaid Lagoon and a Little Frayed Burlap. I love all these torn edges, so I'm going to use some adhesive to just lay this down on my canvas. And we're just going to build this. I don't know where this is going. Um, I don't really have a plan. I have a vision and we'll just see what happens. We'll take it as it comes. So I think it needs to go this way. And we're just going to lay it down. I like the sort of raw edges on it. Let me get a... I'm just going to burnish this down a bit. That looks really good. And then I have a little piece of burlap. Um, this is the roll, the burlap roll, and this has pink polka dots, but I don't want those. I want just the burlap because I want that texture. 
So I'm going to lay this down. And this again is an 8x8 eight eight watercolor canvas. And I'm just going to overlap that with my clock and kind of lay it down. And now I'm going to take, this is new, I just got this in my kit. This is Craft Twine. It's really awesome. It comes in these four great colors. And I'm just going to take some of this and I'm going to start um, just kind of put some of this down to hold it. And I'm just going to start dribbling this around my canvas. Just random, just to add some neat texture in the background. And I don't really care if it's, you know, symmetrical or not. I just want to get the texture down there. I got glue on my fingers so that twine wants to stick. Now, um, let me see, I want to start working on my rocks. You know how you, when you go to the beach, there's seaweed up on the shore, and there's shells, and there's all kind of stuff. So I'm going to put some hot glue down. This is Spanish moss. It just adds a really nice textural element. And it's got that great kind of ocean green color, so it's going to work very nicely. I'll go on my rocks. Don't touch the hot glue, just kind of tap it in there because hot glue will hurt you. Okay. Nice. I'm liking where this is going, people. This is looking good. So I think that's good for that. And then maybe I want to bring in, this is um, <laughs> my poor husband being married to a crafter has to be a hard thing because everywhere I go, I go, oh, I could use that. This is lichen I picked up on a walk at the park. And I said, no, no, this will look awesome. Trust me. So I'm going to put a puddle of glue right here. This is a really nice texture. And press that in. Looks good. And I've got a feather that I picked up on the beach. I'm going to tuck in. Well, maybe I'll wait on that. Okay, so let's bring in. I've got chipboard here somewhere. What a mess. All right, so I've got this beautiful chipboard. I love, I love Little Birdie's chipboard. So I want to add a little color to this. So I think I'm just going to tap on with my finger. Let me get back in the frame here. This is um, the same paint, the Walnut Cream. It's a really nice shabby chic color. And I'm just going to add this on. So tap it on with my fingers. And if that bothers you, you can look away. <laughs> but I'm learning to use my fingers a lot more. One of my biggest objections with mixed media was how messy it was. And then I just decided, oh, well. And it takes me right back to when I was a little girl making mud pies. <laughs> so I kind of got over the horror of, oh my god, I'm getting my fingers messy. Okay, hold on, I'm just going to heat dry this. And of course, you could use this exactly as it comes out of the package. I just, I like to add a little color. So I'm going to, I've got a little Distress ink here. This is frayed burlap. And I'm just going to add a shadow around the edges just to kind of make it pop. It also gives it a really great 
vintagey, distressed look. I think I want this right here, but I'm not going to glue it yet because you never know, I might change my mind. All right, let's bring in some flowers. These are Symphony Ivory, and this is from their Sparkle line. I don't know if you can see it, but they've got a really wonderful shimmer. And these are, these are some of my favorites, y'all. I just love these Wendy flowers. And this is the Arctic Ice. And I've got some really pretty turquoise feathers. And I think I want to add in maybe some of these little teeny tiny rose buds. These are cream rose buds. And look how tiny. There's my pinky fingernail. They're so tiny. I love these. Let's start building. I'm going to start with this really large symphony flower to kind of anchor my composition. A little hot glue. I'm just going to put it down right here. I like the way that looks. Then I'm going to take my feather. Just tuck it in here. I kind of want it to come off the edge a little bit. That's always fun. Okay. And I don't know where I got these feathers. I'm always picking stuff up um, when I'm out and about. I'm always looking for pretty things. All right, I love that these have the leaves on them. I'm gonna tuck this in right down here. See, I want it to go this way. And I want my leaves Come like this. Yeah, I'm liking that. All right. And then, doesn't this make you think of a seashell? I love it. Tuck that in there.
Okay, so I changed direction a little bit. I had a sudden idea and I wanted to follow through on that. This is a little scrap of um, Chevron primed chipboard that I had left over from another project. And I hit this with both the Ocean Mist and the Lemon Zing Color Splash. And then I just dabbed it off with um, paper towel. So I'm gonna add some adhesive on this. And I want to tuck this right down into here and get under that shell a little bit if I can. Yep, I like that. This just makes me think of ocean waves, so I thought that would be a fun thing to add. I had a sudden inspiration that I could make this seahorse, and here's how I did this. This is the Tim Holtz Sand and Surf Dye. It's been around forever. I love it. I use it all the time. I die cut the seahorse using the vintage paper pack, and then I embossed it with kind of a, I don't know, kind of looks like a reptile folder, but I sprayed, I um, rubbed Mermaid Lagoon over the flat side of the embossing folder, spritzed with water, then ran it through. And, this, and then I heat embossed with ultra thick embossing enamel and that's how I got this really glossy really thick finish so we're going to add him to our composition and I've backed this with waste chipboard for dimension and I kind of want him to overlap like this that's exactly what I wanted and now I'm going to take I've got one more thing I want to do to this and this is going to be cool I think um, it works in my head. We'll see if it works in real life. This is more of that wonderful mica powder. I'm just going to spritz a little water on my craft sheet. I'm going to mix mica powder in with that to make kind of a paste. And I'm going to tap this over the top of my chipboard. Oh yes, it works in real life, not just in my crazy Kathy head. <laughs> That's really cool. Hold on, I gotta heat dry it and then I'll show it to you. Smooth it out a little bit. Look how cool that is. It just adds that wonderful shimmer like light on water. I really like that. I'm glad I did that. All right, and some adhesive. And I think I want this to go I think I want this to go right here. So let's see if we can make that happen. Ooh, hot. Hot glue is hot, people. I think if you burn yourself within enough times, you kind of become immune to the pain. <laughs> All right, just like that. Try to get it straight. Oh yeah, loving this. Can you see this? This is turning out really even better than I saw it in my head. We've got all this great texture from the string. We've got the crackle from that wonderful two-step crackle medium. We've got all these gorgeous flowers. Okay, this is Little Birdie Hardy Melange, and the color is silver. I just think this is going to be a fantastic finishing touch. So what I'm going to do is just add randomly... And you have to kind of work fast with this. And I can't find my little funnel tray. That's all right. I'm just going to move. Don't freak out. It's all going to be good. Tap this off on paper. Oh, there's my funnel tray. Of course, now I found my funnel tray because this is how it works, but that's okay. I'm going to put this back in my funnel tray, and I'm going to put some hot glue around in here, and I'm going to shake on some more of this wonderful hearty melange. I just let this has a really great vintage glitter feel to it. It's not... Um, I don't know. It's I think it's really classy. I really like it. 
So sprinkling in and tapping off. Ooh, guys, I'm liking this. This is looking really good. Just a little bit up here and there and over here. And then that will probably do it. Gonna be wearing glitter for days, folks, but I don't care. Look how beautiful. That is like a really nice finishing touch. I'm loving that. Of course, there's a glue web. I'll get these. Do you know how to clear those off your projects? You take your hot glue gun when you're all finished and you just gently heat them and they melt away. That's the best way I have found. If you have a better way, please let me know in the comments. Okay, my last thing. This is one of my things that I always do. I'm going to spray my walnut ink. I'm going to, if I can find it, spritz water. Take my round brush. And we're just going to spatter this. And I love the way this adds just an aged vintage look. I like to get it on the flowers. I think that's fabulous. There you go. All done. I'll clean up those glue webs and I'll wait for the uh, everything to dry. But look at that. Can you see? Look at the texture and the dimension. This is just fantastic. I love Little Birdie Mixed Media Projects. They make me so happy. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope I've shared some uh, tips and tricks and techniques that you can use in your own crafty adventures. I would love to hear from you in the comments section below. I do answer every single comment that I receive. Sometimes it takes me a day or two, but I get there. Be sure to visit littlebirdiecrafts.com and see all these gorgeous supplies that they have to take your crafting to the next level. Thanks for joining me, and I'm going to go get my craft on. Bye!